Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves reporter Tim Spears. And as you can see behind me today, Tim in Schlitters, it's uh, well, it's, it's schlitting it down. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, it's the w worst day for weather so far, actually. Um, yeah. Really heavy rain all day. So it clears up for tomorrow's match. Absolutely. Uh, tomorrow's match, big game, but there's been a big departure day as well. John Daddy Budvarsson looks on the verge of moving to Reading. I thought you were talking about Ethan Ebanks Landell then. Well, that as well. well. Uh, I was building up to that. Yeah, so Bud Larson, uh, we believe a deal was agreed with Reading last night. Uh, Ipswich were in for him as well on loan, but um, Reading prepared to offer a permanent permanent deal. Not quite sure of the fee yet, but I think Wolves have got at least what they paid for him, which is a million quid. So uh, I would have thought a little bit more than that as well on top. But um, but yeah, it seems like it was all done last night. We are just waiting for an announcement really once the final details are done. But. Uh, Sort of a shock departure. But, I mean, he um, wasn't obviously on tour, so, so, so people were putting two and two together, I guess. Yeah, no, he, well, he, that's not the reason he's not here. He was, he was given an extended summer break. I don't think he's, he's really um, met up with the players yet since coming back from the summer. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of fans are quite disappointed with it, really. Uh, he was a very popular player, um, certainly for his for his work rate and, and you know, such a wholehearted player and, yeah. and led the line so unselfishly last year. Not like he was missing many chances. I know he no. didn't score many goals, just the three, which is what's really cost him. But um, I think everybody kind of agreed that he needed a break because obviously he played two years of continuous football mm -hmm. and would come back with a fresh start this summer and maybe be the player that he looked last August when sure. he made such an impact in those opening weeks under Walter Zenga. But it's not to be. He obviously, just doesn't fit uh, fit in under Nuno's in mm. Nuno's plans. So it's a bit of a bit of, bit of a shame because you'd have thought that, that a fit and, and firing Budvarsson would have added something. You know, coming on the last twenty minutes at least. Yeah, I just think um, from what we've from the you know the brief the brief action we've seen so far from Nuno's Wolves, there's going to be a lot of patient passing on the floor from side to side, utilising the wing backs, uh, a couple of deep line midfielders. That's that's the way they've started, you know. Yeah. And we know from the work they've been doing on the training ground that, that, they're, that they're certainly committed to using this system for for the time being. Mm -hmm. Not really one that, that his kind of style of play would fit into. So um, I you know I, I agree. I'd like to see him hung around. I think he's a great impact player from the bench. He offers he offers so much. He's not he's Obviously, not just about goal scoring. He's, he's, he's worth keeping, in my opinion, because of what he offers with his physicality, his, yeah. his link-up play, his unselfishness, his workload is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, obviously, doesn't figure figure under Nuno. So one guy gone permanently, one guy gone out on loan today. Yes, yeah, so Ethan Ebanks Landau. This is this is widely expected that he that he would depart. Um, Sheffield United really wanted to sign him permanently, but. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't get done, and they went for Richard Steeman instead. He mm -hmm. signed there a week or two ago. So uh, yes, he's gone to MK Dons on loan. Um, I think a lot of people are expecting him to leave permanently, myself included. But he's um, he only signed a three and a half year contract with Wolves in January. So yeah. they obviously think high, highly of him. And with another season at League One under his belt, if he if he ends up being one of the top performers in that league, then maybe he'll come back and, and make an impact at Wolves. We'll see. But yeah, so he's gone to. League One MK Dons for the rest of the season. Well, let's concentrate on the, on the boys out here, and we've got another game tomorrow, and <laughs> it's different time change and uh, different different venue as well. Yes, it's moved. It's, it's within the last few minutes. It's it's moved uh, half, an, second game. half an hour away. Mm. Uh, yeah, the second game's moved. The Tuesday's match has been moved as well. Um, I know there have been a few quibbles about the facilities here. I mean, we we, we haven't been given a reason as as to the late change, but obviously Wolves aren't happy with where the game has been played. I imagine they've scoped it out today. Um, you know, speculating here, but maybe maybe an issue with the pitch or some kind of facilities there. There's obviously something drastically gone wrong there to change the game at such short notice. You know, I was say, a, don't they do a, a recce of, people... of these places before? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there must be something that, that they found today or yesterday that's, that they're not happy with. We'll try and find out what that is later. But it's um, it's a massive inconvenience because if mo a lot of fans are coming to Innsbruck, and if you're driving from Innsbruck, it would have been half an hour to Yenbach, which was where uh, where the game was going to be played. Yeah. It's now an hour. So an hour journey, if you get in a taxi, you know, they're going to be pretty expensive out here. So sure. um, it's a massive inconvenience. But yeah, just as long as everybody knows, we'll continue to spread the word later that mm -hmm. the game, for people travelling here tomorrow, the game's been changed. So check opposition. There's also, it's an early kick-off time as well, okay. so it's 4pm UK time, 5pm local time. Oh, OK. Well, I don't mind that. It's a bit earlier. Bit more, bit more bedtime. Get to, get to the bars earlier, yeah? Oh, maybe for you, not for me. I've forgot I did this. I did, I did these videos. Um, but... Three at the back, obviously, we started out against against Werder Bremen. Do we expect to see the same kind of formation? Yeah, I popped down to training uh, yesterday. Same same kind of shape. A, a lot of work on shape and tactics again. Um, uh, Bolly, Danny Bart and Connor Cody, which was the three centre-halves that started against Bremen, that they were doing a lot of work together as well. Okay. Back. So perhaps we'll see them start again. I know he's taken a real shine to Connor Cody in that position, so I'd expect we'll see him again, although he did, he did play, I think he played 90 minutes the other night, so maybe not. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of work on shape, 
and tactics and getting the ball out to the wing backs really really quickly on, on the floor yeah. at pace. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see a lot of that. But yeah, um, we used to see the starting eleven. Um, Courtney Hawes would expect to play because he didn't feature the other night. Yeah, it'd be good to see and, him. And I think the, the keepers as well. Will Norris has come out, the new signing from Cambridge, and Jack Ruddy as well. They didn't feature the other night, so you'd expect them all to, to play for a start. And who was it? Who was it a bigger game for? Do you think? I mean, obviously people want to impress, but are there, are there certain people who you would have thought want to catch Nuno's eye sooner rather than later? Yeah, well, obviously um, departures are coming thick and fast, and Wolves have still got a huge squad. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a key time to impress. I mean, we saw the, the mark that Jack Price made the other night. People. Everyone, yeah. everyone thinking he, he's on his way out, you know, um, with Ruben Neves coming in as well. But now he's, he's suddenly staked a massive claim for his first team place. Um, so, you, so others will de be desperate to do the same mm -hmm. with this kind of fire sale going on. I say Joe Mason's certainly vulnerable in that regard. Um, didn't pull up any trees the other night. I'd like to see him have a good game tomorrow. And to see yeah. what position he plays. I'm not sure the left of the front three really suits him that well. Mm -hmm. Um, Brighton and Bakari didn't really press, uh, impress on his own up front. Again, that's an unusual position for the him. Just inside, yeah, um, behind the strikers. So we'd want to see him have a good game as well. Uh, look forward to seeing more of Miranda at the back. Mm -hmm. Neves, obviously. Of I mean, course. He, he came on for half an hour the other night. He's been playing with the under-21s in Portugal this summer, so I think that's why they're kind of easing him back in. Mm -hmm. Love to see more of him. Uh, Michael Zyro as well, obviously looked rusty on his on his uh, on his first appearance back after 15 months. Oh, completely understandable, looks a bit rusty mm -hmm. tonight. Love to see him um, kind of step it up a gear as well. I'm sure he'll be getting some more minutes. Um, Sylvan Deslanders as well, would like yeah. to see him have a good game. You know, w w Wolves are in the hunt for a left back at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, the deal for Philip Heiser, as I tweeted out last night, we believe that's that's on ice at the moment. German left back that they were very interested in, but his club Dynamo Dresden not playing ball. So all of a sudden, if you know, if Des Landers puts in a great win of performances in pre-season, it's a clean slate, and you yeah. can say, look, this guy's all right, we don't need to sign left back. So, uh, you know, it's, cliches galore, but it's it's a fresh start, mm -hmm. and the windows windows of opportunity are out to everybody. And we shall be there tomorrow night. Make sure you follow us at expressandstar.com for all the match action.